Right now it's 7 o'clock. So we're calling ourselves to order here. Uh, I expect people may continue to, to trickle in. Uh, so the top of the, the top of the can you is that the same chair? A different one or the same one? No, it's the same chair. Uh, hey Peter, can you not put it back together so it looks like it's so it's not so tempting? There we go. That ought to solve that problem. Thank you. I can take it home and get it fixed. Oh, do yeah, yay. Can you get this one fixed? I don't think he knows how to do that. <laughs> okay, we are called to order. We have 15 minutes at the top of the agenda for public comment, and I, this is, this is uh, generally reserved for items not on the agenda, but given, I expect that many of you want to comment on things that are on the agenda, but we also want to try to manage our agenda within the time we have, so what I'm going to do is dedicate the 15 minutes to hear from the public but will you please raise your hand if you'd like to speak in the 15 minutes. And your name, sir? Patrick Finney, F-I-N-N-I-E. Hi, Patrick. And Cindy? Cindy gardner Morris. And Doug, did I see your name go up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim and Ann, do you guys want to speak in public comment? Well, we've got a, a spot. Oh, you're on the agenda, right? right? Yeah. And Peter, are you here to speak as public comment? Uh, I'm here sure. with public. What? You're on the agenda. I'm on the agenda. Okay. okay. So, uh, during the Rhodes report, right? Okay. So we have we have three folks who want to speak during public comment. I am I am going to be absolutely impartial, which means I am going to set a, a timer uh, for each person to speak for. I'll say for four minutes. Four minutes for uh, Pat, four for Cindy, and four for Doug. And why don't we just go in that order? Pat, you're welcome to join us here at the, uh, at the table. And when the timer goes off, don't take it personally, but I'm gonna thank you for your comments and invite Cindy to come forward. Okay. Okay, ready, set, go. All right, I'm here to comment on the lack of notice about the new position. Uh, Director of Public Works. I didn't know anything about it, and a lot of people that I spoke to didn't know anything about it until I saw it in the front page forum, the front porch forum. Um, those kind of things are not the same in my mind as a curb cut, brush cutting, uh, whatever else happens in day to day business around here, and deserve, in my opinion, special notice. You're talking about creating a new position. And the money that that costs is a little bit more than what we usually would just slide, let, let slide, I think. I think that, that, that this should have been spoken about until the warned town meeting day. And that town meeting day, the people, the citizens of the town of Callis, the taxpayers, should have been allowed to voice their opinions and vote on it. That didn't happen. I'm very disappointed in you people. Okay. Is there anything else? That's it. Okay. Uh, just for the record, we did uh, warn a public meeting. I responded to your email. There was a, a, a I didn't get it. There was a public. <laughs> you didn't get the email. I didn't get an email. No. I responded yes, to your you email. Um, I will. I will send it to you again. The, we warned a public meeting specifically for that topic. It didn't wasn't. It, it wasn't. Okay, I will send that to you again. I do appreciate your comments, both in email, and I'm glad you came to talk to us tonight. Thank Thanks, you. Pat. Thank You're you. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. I will, how, how I will, is, I will forward that? that email to you again, Pat. How much Thank is the position? How much is it? We, ha we haven't hired anybody. We haven't hired anybody yet. You no, have no. We have a budget in mind that we're not prepared to discuss tonight. It's, it is budgeted within the budget, I will say that much. Cindy, come on forward. I'm Thank going to stick you. to the four minutes. Thank That's you, Pat. 
if that's okay with you. I'm going to go ahead and stick with four minutes. Look at you. <laughs> Where'd you get that thing? That, this is what she needs. This is what she needs to walk on County Road. It is. Yeah, it's visual props. Well done. Does anybody remember when Betty Morse came to town meeting to wear a gas mask back when people used to smoke at town meetings? And, and she, I mean, she tried to say something. She couldn't say anything. And Wayne spoke for her and said, "She can't breathe in here. We need to change the law." And they did. Anybody remember that? Yep. Well, I'm channeling her energy and saying that I'm, I'm asking that we change the speed limit on County Road from 50 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour until the 40 mile an hour speed limit sign in Maple Corner and then it'll drop to 25 for the village. And the reason I'm asking for that um, is that a bunch of people petitioned for this back, I think, in, in spring of 2019 or 2020, and we haven't really had a discussion about that here at the select board meetings. The reason that I'm requesting that is that I think it's good to have a consistent speed limit all the way from Montpelier through East Montpelier to Maple Corner. It's confusing to go 40 in, Montpelier, in, in East Montpelier and then to speed up to 50 for a few miles. I think it's about three miles, maybe less. And then speed um, down again to 40 for just a few feet and then you go down to 25. So I think if it was consistent for all the way from Montpelier right to the village of Maple Corner, that would make a lot of sense at 40 miles an hour. Another reason I think that is because we have a lot of walkers. There are many children now in my neighborhood. There are people with dogs. There are people with um, bicycles, adults and children riding bicycles by my house. There are horses, and there are drivers and riders. And I'm pretty safety conscious. You know, I go out there with my lights, you'll see me flashing. But it's fast when people are going by at 50, and I think it'd be better if they're going by at 40. Thank you for considering this. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job. Doug. I want one of those here. I think the same thing about the way we do it. You know, low speed, but now it's only five. Yeah, I'd like to put some speed bumps in there. That'd make you happy, wouldn't it? Huh? I'm thinking about getting a mess of uh, kidney pins. Because they like to eat gravel in the road. <laughs> huh? Oh, they like to eat gravel. Oh, so and how about my post? My post inside on the long side of the road keeps the road, the town people off the road commission and everybody out, keeps them from stealing my lawn every time they grade it. Um, yeah, I and I like to get in a new position. I really think we need it. We need it bad. Thank you, Doug. We really need that bad, I'm telling you right now. I live on that road, I see everything going on, I'm in this town, and I could comment about other things, but I won't. But you know how I feel about this. I don't like this. I think we need some other, we need some new blood in this town. On the road commission, a, we need new blood. I'm sorry, folks, we do. I see it all the time. We need it bad, real bad. Um, they dug up through by uh, the Big Ben and going towards your, your road. Uh, Tucker Road. Tucker Road. Yep. They, that big corner. I've had two cars roll over, end over end, coming down that corner. Now that big road, nobody asked me about taking that dirt. That dirt is my dirt. It's my dirt. It is. Dirt around his collar. <laughs> dirt everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in So Lee Kelly, you're, you're letting him yeah, no, time. You take two minutes, let me add two minutes to me. Just like Congress. I like this, you're good. Just because I know. Right, right, we, need, we need to make some moves here in town. Okay? I know that that dirt belongs to me. Nobody asked me about that dirt. And I don't really care, but I'd like them to ask me about it. And when they did get this jump through there, Two cars have rolled over there right in front of me. I don't know why they didn't get killed, because they're in there. Pelchak's Donna's boyfriend did it, and he had a spare, two spare tires in the back seat. And we ribbed on them. They didn't get killed. You and I would have been dead. <laughs> so, and that dirt, maybe I'll measure it up someday and send you guys a bill. <laughs> Probably won't. But, you know, the way I look at this, they're going to. Take the breaker and they're going to push that dirt, slow by sure, into the ditch so that cone is wider. 
wider. Every little time they grade that road, they do that. They do that. They do it. You notice it down by Factory Street. You go that way. You notice that road getting wider in that corner where the septic, where the, uh, just have a well in the city. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's getting wider because they did the same thing. All our dishes in town are stupid. The ditches and look at the dump of the town. Uh, I, I got a complaint from your neighbor about the ditch being too deep and she, her loggers ah. couldn't get in there and she was concerned. Same yeah, concern. oh yeah, it's, it's stupid. The ditches are so deep and so, and they did the same thing to George Road. They, you know, the first time, the first time they did it, I thought, oh my God, I can't meet anybody here. And then, now, they got the dirt, they come along with a grader and a little gravel and they push it under the hole and you don't notice it, but I do, because I live there year round. I'm damn sick of the speed. We're going to do something about it, or I am, and you're going to be up. I don't know what we're going to do. And I, we, we, we got to stop this. I mean, they're 45, 50 miles an hour by my house, and they yeah. don't even. And you know yourself. Yeah. You try to get them to slow down. They won't slow down for you, will they? Well, I did something about that one. Yeah, well, he's going by my house tonight. <laughs> hey, okay, so thank you. I hope you're going to stick around, because we have a lot of time uh, a lot of pieces roads. of road stuff on the agenda. Tonight's like roads, 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 the whole thing. So and some of that is the speeding. Hmm? Yeah, some of it is the speeding. Oh, yeah, we got to It's speed. got to see, it's got to stop. I'm, yeah. done. I'm done with it, I'm telling you. And you guys have talked and talked to every year. Year after year, you talk about this bull crap. Well, oh, speed. we're doing something. Well, it shows you how difficult huh? it is, Doug. It shows you how difficult it is. We're trying. We're trying to come up with different ideas. Let me tell you. But, but widening roads, you, Doug. Have widening a roads results in faster speeds. Uh, right. That's just okay, the so let's move on. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is everybody, anybody else? Does anybody else want to speak? We have a couple minutes, but I want to thank, thank Doug and Cindy. Thank you very much for, for helping us work within the, the public comment time on the agenda. I really appreciate that. Uh, we have warrants circulating somewhere? Yeah, okay. Circulating. Doug, do you know our school crossing guard there, Cindy? You missed my presentation. You'll have to watch the recording. Yeah, you will. Pretty good. Okay, so the next the next item is the uh, consent agenda. I almost did, but it was too dark when I get home. Doug and Cindy. Okay. Okay, we're moving on in the agenda. Consent agenda, we are uh, removing the minutes from June 27th and... And 27 and 28, we will put those on next time. And let me ask the board if there's any other things that need to come off for tonight. No. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any other discussion, comments? No, I've, got, I've got the document. You got stuff for us to sign. Thank you, Denise. <clears throat> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Staining. Okay. On we go. Uh, all right. Rick. The big uh, speed carts. Um, we have, I don't know if you all looked at the agenda when Denise posted it. We have half an hour on speed carts, but that relates, Tim, uh, to the county road speed proposal. And Doug, all of this is very relevant for whatever we can end up applying on Lightning Ridge as well. So, so we've got, it's between the two items on the agenda, we have until 8.05 to talk about speed issues. So Rick, I'm gonna let you begin. That sounds good. <laughs> so part of these speed issues we're having around town isn't even just on Lake Ridge and County Road. It's, those aren't the only places, though they're extreme places. And particularly County Road where we even have, we got a lot of kids running around out of Maple Corner you know, with the pond there and everything else. But one of the things we're approaching, I've been looking at uh, more of the speed signs, but a little different generation than what we've got down at Maple Corner. And we've talked about both of these is simultaneously. And the Maple Corner sign is place walking. It should be, it's right down in the village. And cars see that, they're speeding. They, it takes hundreds of feet for them to decelerate. So there are three Maple Corner before they're good. We need to move that up above up into the high 25 zone. They're actually very effective. But what I've done is I've priced out, I found some more speed signs that are kind of this next generation that we're looking at. I'm going to propose that we buy one, if not two, of these tonight. And one of them I want to place up. We've got a clear problem on Lightning Ridge because of it's long, it's straight. It's a downhill run all the way from 
Yeah. <laughs> they can see from I know. We live all on the way to the top of the hill. You live there. I know exactly where, and you're right. And so what I'd like to do is get, for the time being, like a semi-permanent speed sign up, actually up near, kind of uh, just down below, uh, kind of between uh, Tucker Road, or yeah. below Tucker Road. In that street, people are coming that off that corner line. right there. That's right, and that's they're it. coming off that long grade down, yeah. and they're going too fast. So we're getting getting toward that school zone. We have to be accelerating before we hit <coughs> the big hill there by beyond your fire. Yeah, in front of it. So these signs do. This is a different generation in that we can not only, you know, set have have the radar speed warning if people are speeding, but also counts and, and records the speed of every vehicle that comes along and timestamps it. Okay. So we can use this like a, a counter. With that, we can do two things. One thing, we can see how effective we're being. We're seeing that people are they're slowing people down. And it, these really work. That's the cost of state. We, they, you have your chronic speeders, but that isn't many. It's 5 to 10 percent of the driver. We'll deal with them other ways. But uh, the first thing is get the bulk of the traffic, as you know, when you're driving, people are driving, they're in la-la land most of the time. I did roadway design. This is, and what these signs do is they bring people back on task and they say, oh, it's a speed up, we got to slow down. So we'll do that. We're going to be able to verify speeds this way. We'll see when, and this tracks it by half hour intervals. So we'll see how many vehicles are going to what speed by bank. You know, and we'll know when they're traveling. One thing, I used to do hundreds of these when I was a senior transportation plan in the time. We did all the time, all for three seasons out of the year. And traffic, what you see is very, their patterns of movement. We'll find out when the really serious speeding is happening. And that means we can be really surgical about hiring sheriffs to come in. You know, we'll know when those cars are moving. And it's and so we'll be able to won't be random, we'll be able to see, you know, know when to really look for. And then I think for us too, I'm looking at trying to start with buying, if we can, two of these. One that we can also use, we can actually put different messaging on it so we can one thing about these signs you don't actually have to have them in place all the time. You put them in for a few months. And then there's a residual effect for several months. It will slow down traffic. I mean, you, so you bring it back. You can move it to actually different locations on Lightning Ridge. I'd like to have two or three places. So we can break speed, you know, up toward uh, Rick Winston's after the, when they first start accelerating, you know, down off of that run of hill there. And, and then to be able to move those periodically, you know, once or twice a season in the summer, maybe we'll have to figure out how often we need to do it. But you know, kind of move it up and down that road. So those are on wheels? No, these are on there are two types that we're looking at. The one is more of a it's actually generally a permanent sign, but it's on a pole that screws into a base that's mounted on a precast concrete plug that's in the ground. So we have to put in concrete plugs where we want to put this, which is okay because we can use we know what locations roughly we want to put these, I think. So we'll put the plug in the ground, and we'll have out from the crew every, whatever that is, let's say it's every two months, three months, we can, we can literally come unscrew the pole with the sign on it, move it to a different location, screw it in, let it run. So we kind of work on the driver behavior along the whole road. Now I'm also looking at a different, a different sign too that has, it is a really portable base sign. And then we can move this all over very easily. There's no base that it's got its own base. And one of the things about these, I actually have two intents of using that. One is that we can use it on any road, including on Lightning Ridge. We can use this sign not only to, as a flashing, if you're driving, say if you're driving 50 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, we can use it to slow you down instead of tell you. But we can also turn off the indicators. And we can just use it to measure the traffic speed of your vehicle. So we can use this periodically in pairs. So if we'll put up that, we can go out before we even put a traffic sign in place 
and run that for a week or three days, right? We'll see what the traffic numbers are, how fast drivers are moving. Then we put in the other side and we look downstream and we see if it's affecting the speeds. So we can use it to see if we're having any impact. And then there are a couple of things I want to talk to you about because you've got some, yeah, you've got some good ideas. Of, I do have some good well, ideas. Well, other than mortar shells, you know. Uh -huh. No, I but we'll we'll sit down on the phone because your your property up there is like a it's actually a really logical place. What happens with drivers when they're speeding, they drive what they perceive to be the safe driving speed of the road. You've probably heard me mention 85th percentile. It's, rule, it's how they determine what the safe driving speed of a road is. And on rural roads, like county road, it's in the 50s. Because your brain, as you're driving in a really rural environment, without not any traffic, you're making over 100 decisions a second. And so it white noises that line. It's looking at everything it sees through your eyes, and it's saying, what is my reaction time? And it, you tend to drive what you perceive. Now, that's deceiving, because you don't see everything that's a hazard. So what we have to do is, you know, and you hit it a little while ago. It's like the wider the road is, the faster people go. I proved it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We took a, in Cornwall, when I was down there, and I was working on Madison County. Route 30, we did a right in the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle of the middle We had a 12-foot lane, so 24-foot travel way between the white lines. And, we, and there are a lot of bicyclists and runners from the college on that road. It's a real problem. We cut out one foot. I got the state to, cut, to take those lanes down to 11 feet. And it reduced the speed something like 10 to 15 miles an hour, just by cutting one foot of visual Went out of that road. It reduced because it takes what they call shy behavior. You, you That's like it in the funnel. That's what I'm doing in the funnel. Well, yeah, and I got it. You're right. And you know what? Your trees do that. Your hedge does it really well. Yeah. But there's some other ideas I've got that you're willing to play a little bit or it's prepared for me. Because I'm going to play, but I'm getting sick all this morning. Don't get done. I get it. I get it. But we're trying to do We're getting it done. We're doing it. And we're trying. We gotta do this incrementally, but I kind of have a way of measuring it. That's why we're trying to get to speed as signs of things. So first to warn a lot of drivers. That should slow a lot down. But a lot can be done, you know, if we can you got a natural funnel point there because of the, your trees and everything. And so we may be able to create natural behavior in the drivers that slow them down. If you drive on the interstate, if you you've all driven where you've got Jersey Ferry and Guardrail, people will naturally slow down when they get into those, you know, because that they get scared because they feel like their car's gonna hit something. And that's what you use, you know, the very specific rules around that. That uh, I mean a guardrail is never more than 18 inches closer to a white line because it will push people over an adjacent lane because they'll think they're gonna hit. You know, they're, that their engineering distances have been very carefully calculated. So, if you can use that with plantings, and if you, if you know the Danville Road, up, you know, through Danville, they went there. They slowed down there. They did. And you know what? They did that with traffic on them. They did it with the railings. They put in those white fences and grant yeah. posts. Yeah. White. And they had, and it feels like you're getting tight in there. They put they that on They had cops yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 All the time. It's really expensive to do that thing. Great bristle did that, and it costs you so much money to do it, even in tickets, you don't generate the revenue back. And what you have to do is change the behavior. You have to make people feel like they have to slow down. And they did it, they did it with a, a mountable island that you can still power, but it's still a visual island. So it creates, you don't look at that whole paved road both ways as a surface. You look at what is to the left, you know, to the right of that little island, and then the expenses, and it naturally slows drivers down. That's that's why that's all done. What I'd like to see in the state, and also uh, all these signs you go up and crosses, crossing the road. I want to see it, not tell them. I want to see a woman on there with big tails. You want to see it? <laughs> well, I really do. Pony tail and big tail on both sides. Not just men with a cowboy hat. Right? 
So, so maybe not. I have something to say about that. So Rick, yeah. can, I, can I? So I heard Which you. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not calling. I'm not. I'm not pushing you on time. I just am wanting to drill into this. What we're talking about. The, well, the, the, the specific. We're going to do that. So. We're going to get the class in a second. I can tell them our okay. plan a little bit. We actually okay. are trying to plan this together. So you're talking about Lightning Ridge and then. And then. And then the county road, but this is. This yeah, is well, nice. they, could, they could, those signs could go anywhere in town. They can, yeah. But we're going to start here. I think, especially the really movable sign, we can really move that around anywhere. But then we'll get into the cost piece of this in a second. But this is kind of the approach I'm trying to use to get this. I mean, the sign is only at the beginning of this. Ultimately, on those villages, we need to have some kind of village that demark like a little sign that says you're coming into Maple Corner or you're coming into you're coming into um, East Valley. And that's part of bringing the drivers back on task. Don't think it'll work. It doesn't work alone, but it does work in combination with other things. You will see, right? It, it's going to be a, these houses is really a tricky one because but it's, I've seen it, you know, we've done it in other towns on like the Western Quarter, 116 and on US 7. I mean, you know how many, there are a lot of cars and there's a lot of speed on those roads. 22A is a big problem for it. And it, so you have to, we, you know, this is where I think we can start to reel this in. It's going to be a combination, a combination of things. And then we're going to use enforcement to get the outline. You know, you go, it's not a one phase approach. So mm -hmm. I think first thing we do, let's start, let's get, let's get everybody, I think the flashing signs are really effective at getting 85% of the drivers slowed down, turn them on task, and they can say, okay, I gotta slow down here. And we'll see that's working. I think you put one up on up where we got a post in the ground right now on a lightning ridge road just before you get to Tucker Road, and I think you put one in, they're going to shoot the damn thing. They will shoot it all up. If you get it on that little peninsula right there, you know. Well, huh? You're right. Hopefully they do. We'll try to get one. They'll, they'll shoot it up back up there, but they won't down there because I'll be there. Good. Well, <laughs> well, 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 we'll get you a cowboy hat. Well, no, I, 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 I think they. Uh, they I can read you from my front porch. <laughs> well, we'll try. We'll try to. I'm with you. I think this is, really, this is a problem. Believe it or not, the, the signs are built with really shock resistant polycarbonate covers. Cool. Not that they can stop my fire rifle, I know, but it's because this is not, they, we have yeah. trouble with this all over the place. Uh, yeah. yeah. so. yeah. Well, let's, let's get some more guns. Huh? Let's get some more guns. We need this country to buy it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, while, I, while I got just a second, I, I talked to Rick earlier in the week and I appreciate his knowledge and information about it. I'm still going to go ahead Rick, with, and throw out the economy model. And that's, I found some roll up speed pumps. They're 275 bucks. What do you mean roll ups? You, mean speed you, speed you, can, speed you can roll them out into the road and you can roll them back in next to the road. Somebody will steal it. Probably a week anyway. Can't you stay? But them? as an immediate, like I don't know how long you're looking at, Rick, and I don't know how much money it is. Well, we're just we're going to try to purchase. It probably be depends on the delivery time for. It depends on. I mean, ideally, we should vote on this tonight and get the, and then get as soon as we get the we can actually install it. We can't vote on it tonight because oh, we, we didn't. We, no, yeah, we, we didn't, didn't warn it. We didn't warn it because I didn't know whether you had a very specific crisp proposal. But if you yeah, if yeah. we can get to a very crisp proposal. Then we'll do it next time. We can warn it for the next week. So then it might be a month before we get the sign. I would not, I'm going to say something about speed bumps on that hill. I mean, this is from my design days. Really. Yep. And I said to you, you know, I, I wouldn't start with that because that creates a hazard on downhill. It's not an ideal Well, thing. it's not a year round thing. It could be two or three days a week. Or on a busy weekend, you can do it. Because mm -hmm. I saw I was going down in the Maple Corner, and I told you that yeah, the other yeah, day I was yeah. going down in the Maple Corner. We're fun lining through cars. Everybody's going 25 miles an hour, fine. And the second car in line decided it was a good idea to pass the first car That's going scary. down in the Maple Corner. Oh, Would you know if if we did? If we did something like that temporarily, that gets my I would not put it down on the hill. I mean, I would not 
That's the what I'm doing. You know what we could do is do something like that above the hill. So you slow them down. Can we can we anyway. can we shift back to yeah, let's let, uh, Tim? I want to keep us on task <laughs> with the, sure. the the speed carts and how they would work. So Rick is describing yeah. a what couple a couple of speed carts and, and carts is the wrong term. Speed poles. They're, they're radar signs, so we can uh, ra radar well, we signs. I am going to say this. So this is important. What he's because his original, you know idea is not bad thinking, but there's another option, and that is instead of what wood could work up there is grooved pavement. It's a reverse of the speed bump. It's what they do at like Tobos and it's what they do at that's what they do mm -hmm. on interchange. That won't throw a vehicle wheel into the air. And but it makes noise, it vibrates them. So if we did a, a series of those up at what the top of the hill. The groove pavement. Like rumble strips. It's kind of like the rumble strips that you see off the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. But these go across the road. So you can't avoid them. And you can plow over them. There's no removal. So and I talked to Alfred about that. And he, you know, he, I, he thinks that's probably a pretty good idea. If we, and we do that above the hill. So people slow down before they hit the hill. Because decelerating on a downhill is not a very effective thing. You've got to get them before they get on a downhill. I like that. But we can, I'll, I'll stop there. We can talk about that more. Yeah, but, yeah. That's why I just, I just wanted to still throw that out. I think it's, just as, yeah, just no, as a tax mayor, I don't know how much these signs are going to cost, how much it's going to take. Alfie will obviously be installed, and that takes a matter of material. And if it's a $15,000 project versus two seventy five. dollars I'm going to 75. Well, hang on though. We have a spot on the agenda to talk about that. I want to make sure because they're not they're not mutually exclusive. No, so no, let's no. stay on task with the with the longer term radar signs, which yes are more expensive, but yeah. they're also highly effective. You know, they're, that's why. I, guess, they're, 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 you know, I, guess, I understand that. I yeah. do. So we're going to get we're going to get to the bumps. I have a bunch of questions, which is fine, which is why I'm not going there quite yet. Okay, we won't. So, so Tim, so uh, so Rick, you're talking about. Yeah, now let's go back to the radar signs. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to radar signs. What, what it comes down to with these, with the, there are two models: this TC600, which is the bigger model, and there's a TC400, which is a more mobile sign. The 600 has got, I mean, I put uh, copies of all the literature in the folder. So, you yeah, see. Right. That, so it's a it, TC 600 that you're proposing? It gives, well, I'm gonna, one of each is what I'm proposing, because it's harder to move around the 600. We can do it, but it will be more expensive because we have to put in a concrete base for that one. And so it is, the, you saw, we, the multiple sign, we have multiple sign options that we can, so we can actually use it if we're doing bridge work. We could move it. To different locations if we needed to. So and I just want to under. <clears throat> I saw that there were multiples, and I didn't. I wasn't clear what you were specifically proposing. So one TC six hundred and one TC four hundred. Yeah, and then the base cost of the six hundred is about four thousand. But you know, if you put there's a four inch, you know, it's a a, a four inch, fourteen foot aluminum pole that it mounts on, which is three or four inches in diameter. That's about nine fifty, and then some steel base and a concrete plug. I mean, the, t the total price on those is roughly around 6300 and then whatever it costs to ship here. So I think what we, would install. Right, what we, what we need is on both, on each of those to have it distill, this is really good discussion, but for a proposal, have it distilled down to one page where we're saying. Got estimates. Yeah, Sorry, but, so but here's right. exactly what the proposal is from Rick. The TC yeah. 600, here's the base cost, here's the, the mounting, whatever, um, X hours of Alfred's time to. Uh, is, this, is this the one that you can, it's the, me, the yes. cement things, and then if you want to move it, you have to have a new cement? Right, this thing. is the one where you've got a plug, a uh, cement plug that goes. So every time you move it, you have to have a new cement plug. Well, yeah, you, you have those already set. set in, 
This only this goes to certain locations like this one. Okay. We would keep on Crapley Lightning Ridge. But okay. do but do we already we don't already have those? The no, we have to buy them. You, either that or we have to make them. But it's cheaper to buy them. What's it's the way to respond that you bury with an excavator? And, and how then there's you? a plate. That's what I. That's in that sixty three hundred or sixty five hundred for it's uh, the the aluminum poles nine fifty the. The extra, the steel base, which the pole screws into, is 510, and then this, the, the uh, precast concrete foundation is 995. So what we need then is we need to take that information from that one and then the, yeah, the 400. 400 or whatever, take that information and put it on a piece of paper. Right. So that it's yeah, I would do it. I so, have got it. section So there. that, you know, so we don't have to look back well, if we want, If we want to... You know, if to if we want to put this sign, let's say we have two mm -hmm. locations or three locations on Lightning Ridge, mm -hmm. then we would need to. It would cost us about fifteen hundred per base. Right. So that would mean we could screw the pole out with a sign, take it to different locations. Because right, location. you got three, three. So you got three preset locations. Yeah, that would now that so that would be that's 60, the nine fifty plus the five ten. Well, sixty three or the, the sixty the uh, the sixty three hundred. I think that's so. That's at least for me when I looked at all that stuff. I have to tell you, it didn't take very long for me to be confused. Okay. So well, yeah, no, no, no. But just pulling out here specifically what we're proposing for Lightning Ridge, we want three bases that each cost this amount plus two moving parts, one is the 600, one is the 400, they, this is the cost, this is Lightning Ridge, and then, you know, we want the, later the, later the, in the, the year, budget year, or we also want right now to buy bases for County Road, because when we finish our right treatment there. at Lightning Ridge, we want to move over to County Road for a few weeks. So kind of, I think that would help all of, I, I get the concept it's, and it's great. I needed to figure out how, where we wanted to go with it. So, yeah. so I, I, with pieces, yeah, I know that piece. So you would be proposing one of the 600? One, one of the 400, and the, the, one of the, the 400, is that the one that's easier to, to move? Says yeah, the, it says the 600 is 67 pounds if you include the batteries. Yeah. 41 pounds of that. Right. I mean, that's, not, pole, that's not that much. You've got a pole, and it's on a... It's on a All the pole is an addition. So it's not a, yeah, yeah, it's at the top of that. So it's, oh. it's not... It's, you know, you can actually mount those on a sign post, but like Alfred keeps in stock. The problem is you have to cast... You'd have to put concrete bases in anyway, because these... It's too much sail area on these yeah, sides. Yeah. Too high. So, and that would mean, you know, our break, we'd have to put in breakaway. I was just gonna ask them. We can do it, but it's gonna, we'll trade it off. Well, I think to start, I, to start, I would start with a precast plug. And then we can experiment. We can have Alfred pull yeah. that and we'll see if it's worth that yeah. labor time mm -hmm. and how well it works if we use it on a breakaway. Because the kit comes with a universal mounting plate that four thousand dollar sign mm -hmm. that lets us mount to a conventional signpost. So I wouldn't uh, start with that because I think we test that. Because mm -hmm. if I know I used to have to do those wind calculations, and a, a road sign has so much surface area, it's very light, and they will bend. You know, this yeah. has weight, yeah. and it's high, and it's got all yeah. that. It's got a yeah. solar panel, and it's got a, yeah. a big sign surface. So. You know, usually, when, when you have signs like that, they do what they go gate or they double post them, and mm -hmm. you know, and even then you can bend them. So, my, this these are much more robust, and these are expensive enough signs that I don't think we want to no. risk. No, <laughs> they've got a good life. You know, they'll last for many years. We can replace the battle. So, so a few minutes ago, you mentioned that. It's not, it's not a single solution. And Lisa, I want to make sure that we, we capture these concepts in our minutes, that one piece of it is this driver information. And, and the speed bumps I would put sort of in that same category of you know, driver information, hello, please slow, slow down. Another piece of it is the design pieces you were mentioning earlier, Rick, that Doug has been talking about too. Visual cues, yeah. um, visual cues like 
hedges, what Danville did where they they put a lot of visual, even built, like North Montpelier, people could argue about whether it's enough, but you have those visual cues of those legacy buildings sitting right on top of the road, that well, there's a, a yeah, village. Yeah, traffic calming. Well, those are, tra right, and so. It's and, visual, yeah. It's well, visual. not just visual, but we've also talked about Visual is, is one way or one end of a, of a continuum of how to traffic calm. Another is rethinking some of the de specific design. Did well, you have some? We can. I mean, look, in the long range, anytime you make a road wider and straighter, people increase right. speed. Right. So for us, as a general rule, it's something we probably want to think about. And it's actually building curvature, I mean, not into road signs. And you see it in the cities, you know, where they do what they call, you know, the chicanes, where they'll do with line striking. They'll, they'll neck yeah. it in. Yep. It's amazing what that does to slow down drivers. Yeah. They use what they call bulb outs, which are the curve along the road. They'll, right. they'll put, they'll bring that out. It does That's what they things. did in Danville. They did that too. And they yep. did it in Bristol. And that, there were many fatalities in the middle of Bristol Village, because that road was so wide, it was, People were coming through there way too fast. So they brought those bulb outs out that did two things. It created a, vis visual, a visual funnel that slows the people down well in advance. They see that way out there. Number two, it brought the pedestrians to a safe point. They were crossing a much shorter distance, and they were visible to the cars. There weren't parked cars that were beyond them. So we can use that idea in this rural. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think Alfred. We have to work on really pulling that road width back and keeping that in, especially if it's straight, because if if we can keep that in, that will have an impact on the driving speed. And so this is something we have to work on. It's very difficult, obviously, because those roads do move. You know, your graders are not precise pieces of equipment. But I think we're gonna have to be more deliberate about trying to keep them reeled in. And then I think, you know, Doug, you've got your poles not only you know, kind of keep the graders out of there, but no, that's the traffic to it. It actually does. Did you know the, the problem is they're very dark, and so they blend in with the shadows. No, I didn't. I didn't so if those are like, if, you know, even white, a yeah. white marker on the top, yeah. they will actually have a lot more. That creates it. Does, it creates a shy behavior, you know that that I talked about, and so it creates it creates a problem. You know, the color just over here on my house, and the road is that much whiter than the color. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I know these, this, this road winding had it every. I know, you made me take pictures. Well, every gravel road in the state winds like this if you don't really consciously keep them pulled in. It's hard to do. And that's, but that's where, too, you know, I thought of doing some movable fence sections and I could build them myself, you know, do, that we could set up as chevrons. In the right of What's that oh, word, no. chevrons? A chevron. It's chevron, a, okay. If you look at Danville, they run the, there's really okay. beautiful no. fences parallel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, you can, instead of doing that, these aren't holding animals in. So you put them at an angle. It creates a forced perspective. You can, and you actually have one little farther out and one a little tighter in. So it creates a funnel effect. Mm -hmm. And it's all visual. And I have a feeling that in itself can help. Do you use saw horses? <laughs> no, but we can. Can you use a little ground? Too short. I think we need something. I think we actually have to build something that, not drill into the ground. I have to make some of the plates on it that would, that you could just sit down. Because we would play with these a little bit. Well, and well, having the ability to use our signs to measure traffic speed, you know, that is, that we can then see if it's impacting behavior. I don't know. To me, we've done did a lot with plantings. I mean, your 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 cedar hedge does a lot. The problem is that there isn't anything on the other side, right? Let me tell you about that cedar hedge. I, well, told, I told somebody one time, there's, there's rare birds that nest in that. And if you put in that thing, I'm going to call it. You mean? I mean, you're going to save that hedge, right? I am going to save that hedge. But I'm willing to put all, you know, control that highway. Forks on it, and they come right up here, just check five. So, so we have about five minutes left. Can on. I talk about the other yep. sign real quick? Yep. This is the 400. This is the one in that 
Oh, this is a smaller oh, is mobile unit that's really easy to move around. Now it doesn't have the the multi sign options that that you know we can do for different messaging. Can, well, can it still do the tracking here? Does it all? Okay. And we can turn it off. We can use this. We can actually turn the speed function off on it and use it just as a counter. Too. Rick, Rick that, that as you come down Upper Main Street in Montpelier, there's one of those these yeah. radar signs. Is that the size of that small one? Uh, I don't know. I think there's there's one of these up at National Life. Okay. So we can look at that one. But these are very portable. And the nice thing is this is something we could use if we've got bridges. If, if, if and that's still, doing is that still rover. not a cart, or now we add a, a cart that has wheels? Has this wheels. is a frame that's got okay. wheels, and you buy the okay. base and you buy the side. Okay, so that's similar to what we have had historically. Yeah, right. now these are shorter, it's a little more limited. I think okay. we, I would have one of each of these, and this one we can use in a lot of ways. It's well, very mobile. And I mean, there's a, you know, there's speeding in other parts of town, not just Lightning Ridge. Right. Yeah. Road. Right. Right. Well, let me, I mean, let me. considering considering as you know, as Cindy and and Doug both said in the public comment at the at the top of the meeting, we have been. We this has been an, a concern for quite a while. These are not these are not cheap um, items, but my personal mood is let's not cheap out. Let's let's like take some true action, well, and, and and and. Not not just signs, or maybe not only signs. I would be disappointed if we stopped with the signs. I really love listening to you talk about design and well, how do we build. It's so the way you really control you too. You, you, you yeah, I really. It at the I mean, this, signs are good because it's something we can do relatively quickly. But I think that the, what Callus, what I imagine Callus wants when I listen to people, not just here, and actually this is the time for me to mention we got an email. From Carol and Jarrett and my, yeah, Michael right, yeah. Wayne. She had, she had some, I, there was a couple of ideas I wanted well, to. Can I finish this piece? Yeah, so, so, so a lot of people are concerned about this. So, so bringing, bringing yeah. other ideas and not just talking about them, actually getting, using, leveraging your expertise, Rick, to keep this conversation moving into an implementation. Keep going. Well, that's what these, these are highly effective. So it's going to be a combination of things that does this. Right. The geometric changes are expensive and take, you know, they just don't happen overnight. If, but, you know, pulling in the roads, we've got to start to do a little bit. And then, but let's go. I mean, the cost on these, the battery powered versions. Now, the difference is on this. The are battery, they solar? No, well, I think we can put a solar head on this. I have to find out what the cost of that is. You, you, you know, think, Rick, so, Rick, I think you just put in a proposal and we'll approve it. I don't think you need to market it to us. Just okay. whatever yeah. you think is right. Yeah, it's all that, that ready for the next action yep. before. Yeah, so give, us, give, us, yeah. give us a second. I just want to see if you're good with this. Absolutely. Yeah. We're good. I'm good with 10 we, more than We are, are. yeah. And, yeah. and, 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 tease yeah. Up, and tease up your design features because I, I don't think we want to stop talking about it. No, no, and, no. And, and what I've given thought to, speaking about speed, coming to Maple Corner, and I've given this thought, I thought about a roundabout, but there's probably not enough room to set one up down there. Um, but coming down the hill, if we put kind of a false median that the plow could go over with a slope curve, and e it either has grass, or you put it. they're called yeah. And, and, I got it. and, and that, would, that would visually narrow the road. Yeah. You mean, that would that visually that? narrow the road so that when people come into Maple Corner, there would be another visual effect. If you do it, you do it at the top, though. You don't do it on a downhill. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you do that. It's too hard for people to decelerate safely. I mean, you can't think about this just in the summer. You right, know? right. So you do this, and it takes hundreds of feet. To, they're going 55 miles an hour out there at least on that road. And so that's 25. The 85th percentile is on that road. I've looked at those traffic counts, and it's in the 50s. And that's what people will ignore speed limits if they'll follow what their brains do, unless you do a lot of enforcement. This is why you have to kind of, <coughs> you've got to trick their brain and say, wait, right, we've got to slow right. down. But, and that's where but that's what I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Rick. Yeah. Right. But when not we go above. We don't do that down in the hole. Well, you can start above and continue it down. So that's like your entry, your entry to Maple Corner. It's actually, kind of. You actually don't need to once you're slow. Yeah. You guys, you guys are hit, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll say, yeah, let, let to, Denise wants to mention a couple of points, and I want to circle back to a point you're making and tie it to Cindy's point. Go ahead. I'm going to check and see if we can use ARPA funds to buy these. Oh, good. Great. Oh, and, that's a good and idea. And maybe we can get more than two. Because, like I said, you know, it's not only speeding in Maple Corner and West County Road, north of Maple Corner. Well, and, maybe not, and maybe not just the speed cars. Can we use it for some of the design features? Well, that's, I'm going to find out if we can use some of the ARPA money for some of this. Okay, you want to mention a couple of, of uh, Carolyn's points from her email? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I don't know. If there's I something, if there's like really an idea that we ask the school to publish things on the newsletter and maybe on their website, send home, maybe they can send home a flyer to all the parents because I think yeah. sometimes the parents are, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late for work, i got to hurry up and drop the kids at school, and they fly by. How, how about putting the kids on the bus instead of driving all these cars up and down the road? Right. You know, we're paying for the bus. A bus is a ride. I know you can't tell we them. Can't, right? we, can't. we can't. We can't. But, but I, I just think that if we could get some messages out to the school, um, and send, and send home flyers. It's like, you know, would you want, what if your kids were walking and somebody was going 50 miles an hour and they got hit? How would you, you know? So I think we can kind of finesse that a little bit. I mean, that's an easy, mm -hmm. that's an easy thing. Yeah. I like and that idea. I never thought of it. I think it's a really good idea. Because that's generating, especially yeah. your peak hours. I mean, your, it's school hours. It is, it is, that's, well, that's, it's, it's definitely, yeah. it's, it's not, five minutes before school starts is when yeah. the road racers come. Right. It's, yeah. it's not only that, though. I walk, at least not on Lightning Ridge. The, is there something in Carolyn's, is that one of the? That, that was like the one that was jumped out to me that was like really quick okay. and easy to do. And all the other things that she mentions, we, we're, we're hearing. We're yeah. about. And I know Carolyn and Mike have talked. Yeah, they've all talked. We've yeah. talked and I've talked, talked to them yeah. as well. Yeah. So the other thing, though, is we're talking about Maple Corner. And Cindy's point, Cindy, I think, um, is it, it's what you just said. People are going 50 miles an hour on county road. Yeah. No, they're going 60, but we hope they're going to slow down to 50. Well, whatever, whatever yeah. it is, it is. It, is uh, it, it doesn't work well for the bikers and the pedestrians on County Road. And so Maple Corner Solutions is one thing, but that 50 to 60 miles that's an right. hour well out is, is uh, something else as well. Right, and that's what well, I think that's where we're here. Data, right? right, and the data, the data shows that, that you know, that 85th percentile, which is, that's what traffic studies look at, right? This is an international standard where you, you, they, they go out on the road at a non-rush hour time, mid-afternoon, perfect conditions. They take not 100 non-platoon cars, basically, they're not bumper to bumper, and they measure the speed for the radar gun, and you align those in order of speeds, lowest to highest. Whatever that 85th percentile is, that's the safe driving speed of the road. The traffic counts that we have, they automatically do an 85th percentile. I don't know if those counts are very high. Now that, so, you know, kind of by statute, we have to use, you, you, like the state doesn't like to deviate more than five miles an hour off of that 85th for the speed limit, because people ignore it. I mean, what they say is it creates, it makes criminals out of innocent people because they're going to speed. So this is why you try to use traffic calling instead. Now that doesn't mean we don't do it. It can be a problem for us if we go to court over it because it's kind of breaking the statute. But I'm actually with you in that it is really stupid to have speed limits that are 40 up to cows, jump up, and then jump back down to 25. That's not a good practice in that short. I mean, that's actually making driving more dangerous. So I'm not completely against this. If we do it, we're kind of breaking the rules, but we're doing it probably for good reason in there. I mean, we could let it go up to 50. I'm, I'm actually going to stop you guys because we're heading into another another conversation. Um, point taken, Rick. Okay. What I really what, what I heard you say is that even though the statute says, and even though the standard is 85th percentile, um, I want to amplify the point you said, which is because John and I are sitting over here saying that that doesn't that has nothing to do with the 
pedestrians and the bikers that's and right. the, everything right. else. That's so, exactly right. so, we're, so, so that's great. That's what the statute says. But we've got a lot of other issues we, that we're trying to incorporate into, into responding to our citizens and making our roads safe for everybody. So I'm going to stop us right there. You've said that you are going to put a proposal oh, in. Fixed number ready. Fixed numbers, um, a one-page proposal that we can have agenda um, for approval on the next. Um, and I'll have a couple of July twenty fifth. Uh, if we can use our company for that one. Um, okay, yeah. on July twenty fifth. I'll have an answer. Tim, I do want to be able to turn to uh, Tim and Anne if you're going to speak as well. Tim, if you'd like to join us up here to yeah. talk about your. Yeah, I think given the previous conversation, um, I don't know how much you're talking as far as money, Rick. Well, for two of these, uh, probably. It's thousands. Twelve, twelve, fifteen thousand. It's thousands. I mean, but if, if, but, if yeah. you're going to spend that kind of money, why don't you just get a radar that takes a picture? They use them in France, they use them in Taiwan, they use them all over Europe. It's because they, I'll tell you the simple reason is it doesn't tell the driver right at the moment. These that's guys what, work. That's they really work. When they that's get the fine. ticket three days later, well, they, they I can't tell the driver. They, they need a speed and a, and a camera. Yeah. They can't tell the driver right from there. That's well, we do. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, if we want to get, I mean, I think the first thing that we do we're, is take, there are a lot of innocent drivers out there. Let's bring them on. Let's bring them on to town. Right, right, right. If there's a posted speed limit and it says 40 and you're going 50, you're not innocent. If it says 25 and you're going 40, I'm not you're not innocent. John, I'm just telling you what There's no know. innocence. I'm not talking. There's a sign. Okay, guys, let's stop. Okay, can I yeah, just let me finish? Talk about, I'm going to finish. Talk about, talk about yeah. speed bumps, too. Well, I think we'll be done with that now. Okay. Um, I still think that's a good idea. It's a temporary fix. And it's $275. Can I, it's cheap. How? Uh, the town liability is not. You know, you might be able to say something like that. As far as putting all these signs up, I hear. Excuse me. I can't hear what you're saying if there's some chatter over here. No, oh, Alfred, I just. Alfred, 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 Alfred and Peter. No, <laughs> Thank you. Buddy. As far as signs go, I hear that it might work. And $12,000 to me as a taxpayer is a pretty expensive experiment. I don't and with, I'll, I'll check out the prices on the speed cameras. And you could even have Washington County Sheriff's Department administer it. I realize that the people aren't, that isn't an immediate slowdown. But, until people figure out they can put mud on their front license plate and spill speed, they're going to get a picture and they're going to get their speed. You have Washington County administer it. Alfie wouldn't have to do anything. Nobody would have to do anything from town. If they're willing to do it. Right. Well, well, you know, you know, you know, right. well they're so short staffed. We, yeah. we, would, we would have the sheriff, you know, 30 hours a week here, yeah. but they only have a limited number of staff and yeah. so they allocate their hours. They give us what they can. It's not because we, we don't want to spend the money. That's what happens. Yeah. Well, and they can't get staffed. Now, you know that. I'll just throw that out. That's another idea. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and especially, I mean, these are signs actually are really effective. But if we find that we have persistent problems, I think we can, you know, we're not going to be just buying, we'll be buying more. We've got a lot of these around town. We can actually have the game a little bit and switch it out, use it somewhere else. If yeah, that's okay. So I, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, we have to look well, why, don't we, why don't we purchase one of these speed bump things and try that too? Can we I do it? But if we do it, we do it above. I mean, and then we right, right, right. Whatever, whatever. What's why don't we buy okay. if they're three hundred bucks? Well, let's get two of them. You put one above and you put one down below. So okay, who who who's decent. gonna who's gonna put it down? Who's gonna pick it up? Who's right. you know whose whose job is the speed bump? The speed bumps are. <laughs> Readily installed and uninstalled. I it also takes about five minutes to is, do. Is stake the, the ends. Oh, yeah, yeah, or just you need to stake one end. I'd also want to check with our insurance to make sure that there's no liability issue. Yeah, we right. got to check state law and we got to check. I was talking to Todd Eaton. 
Yep, I know what you mean. Yeah, he works. He trade. works at Vermont Local Road. <laughs> and, and he told you about these? Um, no, he didn't tell me about these. He and I have been in conversation. I haven't really, we haven't really sat down and talked, but I was trying to find out, not just before I knew of your background, that I was trying to find out what um, the town's ability to either alter speed limits on a state aid road or or such as a county road or do that and i don't know all the ins and outs of this all i know is i've seen one kid squished under a bicycle in my lifetime and i don't want to see another one yeah, and, and, and so for the immediacy of it i mean you could do the speed bump have it here in three days five minutes in five minutes out you don't have to have them all the time. Hey. I don't know what signage you would want. I expect you'd want to put a sign. Did you talk to Todd about the speed bumps? Pardon? Did you talk to Todd Eaton about the speed bumps? Yeah, we've been kind of emailing back and forth, but I, I really haven't sat down and had a serious conversation. Yeah, Tim, what I, so that's good, that's good to know, and Denise is taking a note. Um, it, I, this, I'm just going to speak for myself, not for the whole board. I get that laying down that kind of a temporary speed bump is is simple at that level, simple to get, affordable, easy enough to lay down. But then I go to, but whose job is it to put it down? Who is responsible if something goes wrong? Um, who's going to take it up again in the winter? You know, and probably a million other questions that aren't immediately coming to mind. Liability, are we even allowed to do that? Because, well, that's why I bring it up. Yeah, it's right. just an it's economical kind of, thought that would get us through the summer. If we're, my if my we're guess to. is the board's not going to resolve this through this until next fall sometime. And at that point, it's kind of moved for the summer season. Well, and, and John's right, they just blow through that stop sign. By the barn. Do you have go. something that you can send me about the speed bumps, and then I can ask our insurance carrier yeah. if there's yeah. like the suppliers? They got recycled rubber. Can you do you have a specific one that you? Um, I was looking at the ones through Uline. Can you send us? Send, yeah, us? send it to us. Can you send yeah. It to okay. Us? And, I'm, I'm yeah. Do that. and they come in different lengths. You, you, yeah, you give them eight feet, ten feet. Can we just put them on so the we got a job. Tim. Right, Tim. You no, heard I, me. I, I, send it. Send it to us, and then we can check out you, the insurance piece. You've yeah. heard me ask Rick three times for you know what is the specific proposal. Same thing. If you if you can put an actual proposal in front of us, yeah. Then your it, it might sound like a little thing, but, yeah, no, but, no, but no, you're fine. you're doing a little legwork rather than putting it on us when Absolutely. all of the mind. not that we're not unwilling to do legwork so we got a long legwork leg work list to do I'm okay I mean especially if we do this temporarily we can watch and, and maybe it is okay to do it too if you slow them down at the top of the brow they shouldn't be going more than 25 down the hill and you could it's what I worry about is somebody hitting that <laughs> speed on a downhill and he's transportation. Well, I've yeah. learned the difference between yeah. pumps, bumps, and yeah. tape, tape, speed tape, 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 speed tape. Yeah. Pumps, bumps, and lumps. What? Pumps, bumps, and lumps. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And ski jump. Right, well, you can send um, that to us and we can... Yeah, I'll send all that information. I don't mind doing the live work, but I talked to Rick on the phone and I kind of felt that it had gone beyond that at that point. Mm -hmm. But if I bring that back in, is an inexpensive temporary. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad idea. You can, sure. you can, sure. you can uh, send it to Rick and he can bring it back to us as a, as a specific proposal. Okay, I'll yeah. send all Co Copy me as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And at the, at the same time, I'm curious, I have no idea what those speed camera cost. Well, you can check them out. Then, you know, logistically, who's going to do it? Mm -hmm. Somebody's got a mail. Well, story. we're definitely doing those. So one is not going to displace the other. So okay. just so you know, your speed yeah. bumps are independent of well, that. Well, we, so. we have to look at, I mean, what, what we always ran into, you know, I worked with municipalities before and with the state, is anything that involves people on the enforcement side is very expensive to do. It usually costs you more than you get out of it. Okay. If someone's, so the equipment's probably expensive. The processing's expensive. What we want to do, if we can, if we can change the driver behavior, you're always better off, I and mean, we're getting better at that, much better at it. And these yep. signs will definitely help. They might not get everybody, but that's where we start working on 
straight enforcement. And when you can be surgical about, when you know when the speeders are running through there, we can show the, we can show when it's happening as a group. And, and so, so, hey guys, should we okay. move on? So, well, so yeah, so guess what? It's 8.05 and I, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm I thank you all for your time. Thanks yeah. for your info, Rick. And it got, kind of got me going. What I'm learning, with, learning this as I kind of go. So and I've looked and see what other towns have done because <coughs> Palace is not unique. No, we're not. No, Tim, no, thank you. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to. I'm going to thank you. We're, we've got Stephanie uh, here for um, road standards. Okay. Yeah. So we're ready to move to the next yeah, item. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you both. Thank, thank you for you coming. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Cindy, yeah. we're moving on to I'll the next you, topic. Uh, you Stephanie, are you, uh, you? You're welcome to join us at the table. The topic is Callis Road standards. Hello. Hello. Good work. I'm so glad Thank you are here. I'm thinking about this attack. Thank you. I appreciate fully supported this. Uh, so, so this, I'm, I'm going to frame this topic. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And, Bye, Cindy. And let you and say that we have about 15 minutes on this topic. So a few years ago, the, a, a group of people, Doug, you were, you were involved, Stephanie, you were incredibly involved. Um, so others as well. Rick wasn't, where was it? Alfred, I know you were. We adopted a set of, of road standards for the town. And we haven't um, kind of put an endorsement or you know just brought them back up again and stamped them again to say, hello, everybody, don't forget about it. So that's the topic for tonight. Stephanie, I'm going to let you take it from there. Well, I wrote this letter to the select board recently because I was feeling very upset about the ditches that were being dug on my road. Now, you know, there's a long history. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But the original intent of these road standards was the select board wanted this group, the original group, to write these standards that would maintain the rural and scenic character of our roads. That was the overarching purpose of these. And then we got into a lot of detail, necessarily, because we were working from the state's road and bridge standards that had been sent to the select board. And at that time, the select board said, well, we don't like these. And around the same time, um, a group of residents who lived on the Adamant Road uh, noticed that there were a bunch of trees that were slated to be cut down. And they were upset. They came to the select board. Around that time, I think it was around the same time. I'm sorry, Mark's not here because I really wanted Mark to hear the background. So I think everybody else pretty much knows it. Yeah. But, you know, so that was what we convened the group and said, okay, you write standards, you, you know, take the state standards and do something with it and make it more callous like. You know, and to maintain our rural and scenic character. And then that was, I don't remember 2000, when, the first ones were adopted in 2014. Right, and then we readopted. They were readopted, and then uh, J.C. Meyer, who was the chair, he left, and a lot of people left, and Conrad died. And so there was a new group convened, and that's the, um, those are the names of the people on here now. Peter was, I think, on and all the, the whole time, but in any event. Um, so, I um, was involved for years trying to get, working to try to get these road standards complied with, and they weren't in a number of respects, and they never have been in some respects. And I don't have the energy and time to spend a lot of time now trying to work on policing it. However. When it happened to my road, I got really mad because those ditches do not conform with what the road standards say. And they're much too deep, some of them are much too deep, much deeper than the road standards say that you're supposed to be able to drive a car out, not get stuck in it. Um, and there's also the whole issue of the scenic value of our roads. Mm -hmm. And these big ditches, have ruined the scenic value of Jack Hill Road, at least for the time being. I know that things will grow in and they'll look nice sometime again. I've also talked over the years about how the roads are not widened, but they're graded wider and wider. So that uh, some of these roads that were 
fairly narrow scenic roads are no longer narrow scenic roads. And one of the things this group spent tons of time on was coming up with different widths of roads that, that were appropriate to the type of road and the amount of traffic the road got. And from the beginning, Alfred said he didn't agree with the widths, and they were too narrow, and there were other people who disagreed with him. But, but nevertheless, that's where they were. The select board approved them. We had maps. We identified different roads and you know, said, this is this type. We have one, three types of roads or something. Three, three anyway, it's been, yeah. you know, it's just been like, <coughs> it's like they've worked on. And you know, I spent a huge amount of but other people spent a huge amount of time on an immense something. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been enforced. Whether it's an ordinance or a policy or whatever it is, it's been. Right. Okay, so back several years ago, we talked about how these standards really should be reviewed and revised. Some of them are out of date. Uh, the road crew says some of them are impossible to comply with. And then, so fine, if, that's a, if there are problems, we want to deal with them. But at that point, it was, you know, things just sort of fell apart. I got frustrated, other people left, and, and, and the select board just didn't. No, no, we didn't, we did not do anything. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the one so thing that's I'm going to, well, hang on, that's the one thing I'm going to push back on. What we did, Denise, um, I, mean, I think you were the one, we, we tried to get people re-engaged in the point you just made about getting new people, uh, if some of them don't work, if they, if, if it really is impossible, how do we update them? We tried to get people engaged in, in updating them, and and while people want to come and do this, raise issues with us, it is incredibly difficult, and we, we were well, we failed to get people engaged in revisiting those. Now that was what two or three years ago. It was a couple of years ago. It's, it's as you know. It's really hard to get people to volunteer. I to, know that. I mean, people. Help. So yeah. yeah. But one I mean, reason it's hard is that people spend a lot of time on something and then it and it doesn't feel like and that's well, rather demoralizing. You were you were not here earlier. We it was it it was mentioned earlier. We have um, announced a public works director position, and that's part of why because we recognize a need for having a a full time. Person on this, on working with this, right, somebody who actually, who isn't responsible day to day for you know getting a job done, but instead can have an overarching perspective, see how big picture, big picture, but also get granular. Okay, work with Stephanie, work with the Conservation Commission, work with the road crew. How do you think? What isn't going to work? What does work? Where's the you know, doesn't mean everybody can be is going to be happy all the time, but hopefully, we can move forward in having all of that good work actually mean something. And it's not irrelevant to the conversation we just spent forty minutes on 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 speed. No, I, I know. Yeah. Rick, Rick and Denise explained it to me. I think it's a great idea. Um, I think the bottom line problem is what you said, and that is people are not willing to do it. And you know, I had a little back and forth with Kathy Kashansky today. And I said, hey, Kathy, because she was on the original one. Yeah, long time yeah. ago, there was an original one. Yeah. And she got discouraged and left. And I said, yeah. hey, Kathy, why don't you and I get together with a few people? And we'll, I didn't hear back from her. But um, anytime well, and, somebody gets in real life, and maybe, and maybe Doug Lilly. Doug Lilly is still here. Yeah. And he's not milking yeah. anymore. He's got time. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But you know, I'm telling you right now, the, the problem with this town, 30 years ago, we shattered wider than the roads in this town, making them wider. That's the problem right there. The so, roads are too wide in this town. Maybe North Calais is. Doug, Doug, do we all agree in our road standards? You know what they say? They classify the roads as three different categories. Stephanie will just mention that. And also, the road committee recommended roads that are too wide and wider than their classification dictates, they should be narrowed. Right. And we need to work on that. And, that, and, and that we need to work on and that. And that. That, that goes back to road design and speed. And that, Stephanie, it and also goes back to having, some, having somebody that has the time to oversee it. Because right. we certainly don't. We don't. I want to say one thing, okay. and I'll shut up. Okay. I, you notice on your road, how the greater is 
going in between each tree that's next to the road, and they're white, and they, they scoop it in, and they come to the next one, and they scoop it in there like that, and they're covering that stone wall. Shut it. They're covering that stone wall from the roadside down. So, so I'm going to thank you, Doug. Stephanie, are you, you know, one question. Should we re-adopt those road standards right now, or should we... Or, or should we take the time? I mean, we can say we can say that we can say the board has not departed from them. If there's some that don't work, okay. They're in effect right now. You're they are saying, still in effect. Right. So, so, and part of the what is supposed to happen with new employees is they're supposed to get a copy of those road standards. And as we found out. People said that they haven't received them. Well, I've heard that, and I talked to the road crew that day, and I took a copy of the road, and I should have given them. They, they had never heard of them, you know, and this happened a few years ago. They had never heard of them. But this was recently. This, yeah, this was, was recently. Yeah, three weeks ago, when we yeah. were doing those huge ditches on my road. And, you know, so anyway. So there's a training, a training opportunity at the very least. Right. They don't, yeah, so, my, so to answer your question, you know, I think technically you don't have to readopt them. I think it would be great if you would reaffirm them by right. readopting right. them now with the provisio that we're going to work hard to get a few people together to work on them. Because it's not going to happen. I would, it's can I add something? Because I do think the narrow into that was, really, was too narrow to be really safe. I That's my transportation. Yeah. I mean, oh, that, yeah. it's because of vehicle width. And I, Alfred, I know would go with me. I mean, Slow down. But I'm with you. I'm not saying that I'm talking about on the very narrow. We had in those standards, we had different classes of road. And that's, it's an extreme. Yeah, you know, you know Rick, you go to France, you go to France, you go to Italy, you go to every European country, and the roads are as wide as they were in 1680, and cars slow down. And they pull over, and they go. And it's a safety issue because you're going too fast. Yes. If the roads are narrow, they go slower. You were misinter you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. No, I know you're saying they're, they're bottlenecks. I'm saying at the if, I'm saying we hit in the very narrow classes of our road, I think we narrowed them too look too much. I'm not saying the upper classes. I, and I'm disagreeing with you, Rick. It's okay. You're not I'm listening just, to me. I'm just, you're not listening to me. You got this well, state I, AOT head up. You know, I was on Pleasant Valley Road just the other day. You know what that speed limit is? It's built just like County Road, but it's Pleasant Valley. It's a scenically designated, gorgeous road, everyone. It's in Underhill, Mount Mansfield. It's the most beautiful place north of Montpelier. Um, and it's 40 miles an hour, and I was looking at the ditches, and they used a wide excavator bucket, and they, they're shallow. Every one, because they don't want people going off the road and getting killed. It's a state road. You're going to have to cut trees, John. Get that. Yeah, then, then you're also going to have to achieve that long, so, U shaped ditch. You're going to have to cut trees. Well, we might have to do that. And that's, that's why you should be on this so, next committee. So, uh, this, this so we can figure that out. Right. So you get into the speed. That visually, what I was talking about earlier today, your eyeballs read that as road so The more you widen and open that, the faster they go. So there is a, you're trading something there, I'm telling you. So, so, so hang, Denise, you have a question? I think we should look at revitalizing the Rose Committee, see if we can find some new people, new blood, to wheel off to somebody I'm thinking off right off the bat. Heidi. Heidi. Yeah. Um, you know, let's get a mix Cindy. of, of cross all, all the people that were here tonight. Doug we loves the committee. Loves committee. Well, let's, let's can I finish? Yeah. Sorry. And then we would readopt the current road standards with the understanding that this new committee, we can find enough people that are willing to volunteer to revisit the road standards. We're hiring for a DPW. One of the first things the DPW should do is chair the committee. Chair the committee or work with the committee to, yeah. and it's a good training exercise for the new DPW, whoever he or she is. And that can be one of their first assignments because it's a good way to start to get involved in the townspeople and what's going on and right and all that. And in the meantime, we readopt them. We do a memo to the current road crew and say, here they are. 
We need to sign. You have to you have to sign that you've read these, mm -hmm. like we do with the personnel policy. Do we? Okay, so that'll be that'll be something we can award next item, right. next uh, week for a consent agenda. Well, and I'm going to contact Tim, Heidi, Cindy, and see if they would volunteer to be on this to re to revisit the road standards and Doug. Uh, See if they would be on the committee to revisit the current road standards and go from there. And, and I agree with Stephanie's point. I don't think adopt is right, Denise. I think it's just maybe affirm. Reaffirm? Well, just no, affirm. It says, it says they're adopted. Well, you reaffirm them by readopting right, them. Right, readopt them. I mean, it's, so it's a current date, so it doesn't look like they've just been sitting around collecting yeah. dust. My, my point is only getting ourselves, and maybe I'm being too much of a lawyer here, that. When you, if if we set this idea that we have to readopt the we don't warn it. No, well we do have to we do have to warn it. I mean that's I'm fine we're... with warning it. It's just the, it's just that we it's, it's, but we're both lawyers. We they, they, if you set this precedent, you have to readopt it in order for it to be real. I think right. really all we're saying is, you know, we but, just we are affirming it. It's still real. It never yeah. went away. Just yeah. affirm. But that can still be the motion, and it can still be a memo, and it can still be. Yeah, but they didn't for, expire. I'm looking, I'm looking for them to say readopted on the front page with a current date, so that people don't think, oh, they've just been sitting around since 2015. I, I'm okay with that too, in, in, in a different spirit, because we should be doing that with all of our policies. Right, but here's an opportunity. To here's start. an opportunity. Okay, so we will readopt it. You did look at them. Um, I think it was even just last year because you got more road standards from the state, as I recall. And I think John made the motion to uh, adopt them, but only to the extent they're not. Oh, in that was a few years ago. That was a few years ago. Right? What do I know about that? Well, and I don't think we. And I don't think we. We have. I said not, we're in conflict. Callous. We did do that, but we have, we have not been good oh, about. We're not in conflict. We have not been good about. Um, Pulling them up, redating them, signing them again. Yeah, That's right. the best practice for all our policies that and when we when towards. we get finished putting out fires, we'll we'll take that up. Mm -hmm. All right, so on the next agenda, and it can be on a consent agenda, we will Can I add something before we Can I finish please? The next agenda will have an item that <coughs> on the consent agenda that we readopt the road Road standards, road standards yeah. and that we send a memo to the road crew. Um, and they have to sign off that they've read it. There you go. And I don't know when this would be appropriate, but I mean, there's issues that are not being complied with that are rather significant, and I don't know when or how or where that becomes something. Well, that I is. think you have to have the roads committee. Again. That's going to be years of somebody, somebody, well, right now what we have to. Right now, what we have to do is move on. So, in the in our tonight agenda, so we we've, we've outlined a specific next step. Denisha's mentioned more than mentioned. We we you know outlined that we have posted and advertised for a public works director. Very this and many other things that we talk about every meeting are the reason that we created that position. So, right. um, this is the second item tonight. That's why we have that position. So, what we're going to do about it, Stephanie, is the same as, as speed. We've created the position because obviously, us as a five person volunteer board is not able to keep all these balls in the air effectively. I need right. to say something here because okay, go ahead, we've, where we make mistakes. And Alfred, I see your hand. We have got to have some of the expertise in the road. I, you can say whatever you want to me. I've designed and built these, I've watched. Deaths and I've watched problems on roads, particularly winter roads, because they're not properly engineered. And I know the Vermont standards are built, they're built on the ASHNO standards, which are national standards, and 85% of the U.S. is suburban. We know that Vermont, our Vermont standards are a very dumbed down version of them. We're very rural, and we're really, really rural by Vermont standards. So I get that, but there's certainly you can't have just lawyers saying, okay, this is a road we're going out. Because there are real serious safety issues on certain things. And I will bend. I, I know what the ramifications are of building these things too narrow. Rick, they already really exist narrow. John, I know okay, they guys. already exist narrow. So you're proposing a wide Stop. Stop. No. Stop. No. Stop. Stop. We're done with this topic. I Stephanie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
You guys can dis you can discuss this over beers somewhere somewhere. Well, should be discussed and, 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 and in, on the committee. <laughs> Alfred's hand is hand up. Yes, I know. Yeah. Alfred, do you have a comment? Yes. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. Well, I think she should hear this too. See if she brought this issue up. Uh, the town of Callis, along with other towns and many other towns around, gets grant money. So every supply house of grant money has a different criteria that you have to follow. There's one, there's this new, this new uh, general permit that we also, that the select board signed. We pay money, it's the state of Vermont, it has to do with the Lake Champlain cleanup. <coughs> they provide us money for, for doing those ditches. There's a certain way they have to be done. That's what I'm trying to, one of them I'm trying to follow. Another one is back, uh, better back roads. We get a lot of grant money from them. That's a whole other standard, another whole size of the ditch, and another whole reasoning for doing it. It's not just uh, it's not just the, the town policy that we need to follow. If you guys want to, you know, if you guys want to turn down that grant money, then we can just follow our own little policy, and everything is happy. But yeah. you got to think about that money that we're getting from grants. And when, it's a lot. When we first admit, when we first adopted. The road standards, I remember we had, we sent it to the state and they had to sign off on it. So we could do the same thing again. Well, or we may not need to. If, if, if they've already, so they've, 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 already signed, well, they've, right. they've already signed off on them the way they are. Right. But if we make changes, yes. then we would have to go back to the state right. and get their blessing again. And they did give it to us. I, mean, I can find the document. Well, I think we, it sounds like we should find it because, yeah. because if. Things have changed. This well, what's now? Like yeah, three years old. It's fairly new. So, so, so the pieces. Okay, so Alfred, it, good point, but also excellent counter. Hang on, excellent counterpoint that it turns out perhaps they're negotiable. Perhaps excellent ideas will be heard and acknowledged. So I'm I'm not willing to assume that just because it says this that there's not link some link that says. Here's where you tell us what your alternative proposal is. I don't even know the nitty gritty, but I wouldn't assume that that's not possible. And it sounds like a few years ago it was. It was, and we oh. dealt with that guy at V Trans. You know who I'm talking about, right? Well, it's obvious. Um, and I, we can go back, and we can put on the front page of the road standards approved by V Trans and the date that they did that. If we make changes going forward, we know that we have to go back to V Trans and get that approved. And that's, and you just, you just do it. You send it to them. And but there's also a question of what standards do they need to follow. No, it's, a, it's a big deal. I mean, it's a big issue what he's raising about grant money. You know? right. And that's a big issue, but that's something that needs to be discussed, not ignored. You know, it's not something that should just, he should just say, well, I have to follow this standard, so I'm going to ignore the callous standard. Right, exactly. You know, it's got to right. be dealt with. Well, and don't you go to B-Trans and say, here's our standards, do you approve them? Exactly. And then when you apply for a grant. And agency of natural resources. This is about water quality. Right. Water well, is OK, guys, we need, okay. we need to move on. Thank, Thank you, Stephanie. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, so we are, um, we're eight minutes. Rose report. Yeah, we're eight minutes, eight minutes over. Um, yeah, Peter and Alfred, Peter, we didn't have, I didn't hear from you guys that you had done your report and we were, I think we were looking for something in writing uh, that you have a, a strategy. If We do have a strategy. All right, so let's, let's, let's put, Peter's here, let's put this to bed. You guys want to join us? Go ahead, Peter. <laughs> well. Three hours. I need to put my glasses on. Sorry. Thank you both for doing that. Thank you. Um, just last week, I think it was uh, Tuesday, and we drove and backed in on the four roads. Uh, actually, we did three because the because uh, one only had two houses at the very end. Uh, in the district that I've been uh, weeding wild cherry in the last. Uh, for half a dozen years that Alfred has not been mowing for the last four years. And uh, 
And Alfred showed me that uh, the line of sight is really very bad coming out of a lot of driveways. We went, we backed into every driveway. And uh, so it's, you know, for, for me walking on it uh, and not going into driveways, it didn't seem so bad. Uh, and so uh, I also went down to um, East Montpelier and talked to their road foreman about, uh, about mowing the roadsides and the danger of not being able to see coming out of roads. And I saw what he was doing for a while people down there. And it seems to be making a big difference with his mowing techniques. Uh, so I said to Alfred, I asked Alfred if, uh, if you wash your machine uh, before you come over and mow the roadsides, um, then I would pull my permit. My permit. I would uh, withdraw my permit. Request your application. The application. Wow. The permit. Okay. And then I can continue doing my wild gerbil uh, study without uh, much fear of uh, new seeds being brought in. Oh, good solution. You guys. Nice work, guys. Oh. See what happens when you communicate with each other? Yeah. Well, I think I would like to see the select board here communicate with the select board in East Cal, East Montpelier, rather, about what they're doing about wild children, because I think we they can have certainly ask, some, for sure. They well, actually have a program they've implemented. I, I mean, I, they don't have something in writing, as far as I know, but actually, Denise, you sent me to a meeting half a dozen years ago. Mm -hmm. That uh, well, you didn't send me. You put it. You posted it in the front porch forum, and I went. And one other person, Callis went. No select board members went. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've been working on it. Uh, even can we get? That. Can we get? Well, the Alfred and um, oh, what's his name? Alfred. I know his name. Guthrie. Guthrie. Yeah. No, I think I mean, the select board. The select board isn't. Out there with a side, it's some, it's what the road is road group is doing under the direction of the select board. Right, I guess I didn't hear you. You want the select board to go out with a side? <laughs> I said no. East Montpelier select board is not going out with us. It's my point, Peter, is it's not what the select board itself is doing. It's what the road crew in East Montpelier is doing that is that is working and is impressive. Well, under the direction of the East Montpelier select board. Well, well, I think, well, that may be so, but there's no reason why. This select board can't request that Alfred meet with Guthrie and then report back to us. Exactly. Yeah. What are they doing differently? Right. What are they doing? So um, that's an assignment we can give Alfred. Or our new public works director. Well, that too. Yep. Uh, what they started doing was uh, mowing a lot wider, which covers two things. It covers um, the safety of people coming out of driveways. but. Their houses, it's also a great, uh, Guthrie was, was very clear about how different uh, Callis and East Montpelier's landscapes are. They are different. And they've got a lot of fields coming down, and they don't have the woods coming up to the road. Um, and, uh, but they went out and they bought a, a better machine, um, and they worked really hard together. $125,000. Yeah. Well, and, and, don't, you know, and, and don't forget, Guthrie used to be on the Callis Road Group. That's right. Well, they went out and they uh, they tried out machines and they offered to do a demonstration uh, for me. And I said, well, no, I'm not the one that you need to do a demonstration for. Um, you know, Alfred or maybe John or somebody who's interested in it. Uh, but what they're doing is they're mowing uh, a lot closer, which is much easier for them because of the topography of the road sides. Um, and, uh, and they're... They're thinking now they're trying out a flail mower, which was, Alfred's already using a flail mower, but it's a new one. And, uh, and I think uh, looking at the roadsides where they mowed, uh, and they're mowing double wide. They go by and they do the whole town, one pass, and then uh, and they do the, the, the plants that are going to seed first before they go to seed. Uh, then they come by and they do a second pass until things start to go to seed. And, uh, but they try to do the, they don't start on one side of town and work over, they, they, they know where the wild turtle lives. And, uh, and they've got a lot of discussion going on in town. And, and this is something that's never gotten beyond the select board. 
here. Well, but I'm going to, the only thing I'm going to say is not, not for lack of our effort. We have, we have very much. We have supported. We have, we have supported and encouraged an integration of our road maintenance standards with environmental standards. We have asked for that. And what I'm hearing is a, is best practices that East Montpelier has adopted that we can learn from. And I'm, and I'm thinking that is, that... is that a fair statement? I, I don't understand that. But let me ask you, I, Joanne um, Garten. Garten, they're working with Joanne Garten's son. When I called up the town office a few weeks ago to ask about the, the contract that you had signed, uh, or the study that you, Joanne Garten had done with the College Conservation Commission, they don't have a copy of it. I think I do. Well, the town office doesn't have it. And that's something that that the town signed off on and then voted to approve. Yeah, but, I don't understand that, but I can check and see. I'm pretty sure I've probably got a So, copy so yeah, Peter, though, when you, when you, to be fair, when you go to the town office, you're speaking to the town clerk. And what, what, what you're not, you're not speaking to, unless Denise happens to be there and can pull, go into a select board file and pull it out. They, they just don't know. It's not. Yes, it's, well, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's an app. Or the chair of the Conservation used. Commission. It's, it's not even being used. So. But that's not. But, but the town clerk, it, it's not Jeremy. It's, you know, to be fair to Jeremy, it's, it's really not in his swim lane to be aware that we, that we signed something. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't. He searched for it. I was going to say, yeah, I mean, that was before his time. Yeah. He doesn't even probably but understand. My point, understand my point is, is that it's, it's like this road study that Stephanie just talked about. It got done and then ignored. Well, From my perspective, that's the way it went. You know, you know Peter, I, I, I keep hearing this. I heard from Stephanie. I'm hearing it from you. Mm -hmm. We have not ignored it. We bring it up. Alfred will tell you. We have this discussion routinely about the road standards. Routinely. It gets fiery here. It does. It gets fiery here. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Routinely. Right. So you can accuse us of all these evils, I but I don't say bullshit. I don't see it. Well, good, Peter. Then come you, to the you meetings and you'll you see it. it. You used to come to all our meetings. Come I to all of our meetings and you'll see it. All of them. I don't anymore. Right. And so you don't, don't see it anymore. Right. And you don't want to serve on the. Yeah. You know, I, 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 you know, we had a meeting in January. I think it was. Mm -hmm. I spent forty hours. Responding to that. Responding in January. In January. He said, "No, no, no." He was talking about the the work that Mark and I did to try to develop an application. Oh, oh. Yeah. So I get I get a lot further by going and talking with East Montpelier and by going down to Randolph than I go to get here. So okay, and Peter. Just, Peter, I've been frustrated for 30 years. Peter, East Montpelier has a full-time town administrator. It is not the select board. It is not the town clerk. The select board has a full-time. The, well, the they town. Have, no. Well, it, they have. They have. It is a different construct. And I'm going to now just just bring you the same energy. We are a volunteer select board. We absolutely have have been champions for the road standards for the, the Joanne study yeah. and what we are doing about it. You've heard several times from the beginning of this meeting, maybe you weren't here then, we created a public works director. We are volunteers. We are volunteers. I do not have, none of us do, the, the time, and 40 hours a day. It's, it's why we bought it. Look, you don't, you don't want me to talk. You keep on No, I want to finish. I want to finish. No, I want to finish for once. Because you keep on telling me, Peter, we don't have No, 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 you put it, you put it out something. You don't have time. Hey! You keep on saying, and then you shout me down. No, you're sure no. interrupting me. This is our meeting. No, no, actually, I'm not interrupting you. I'm interrupting you, her. He interrupted me. Now. Peter, what I'm doing is pushing back on you. I feel, I feel but yes, I'm like, I feel. What, what, what you're saying is unfair. No, I don't think so. I, yeah. You think it is, and I don't think it is. We bought a dedicated mower. Yeah. We bought it. We didn't have them. We had to rely on a contractor. And the contractor went around once, and he said he'd do it the second time. And he said he didn't. For whatever reason, he didn't. His machine broke, or he had other work in Worcester. And then, so we said, we're going to get our own dedicated machine so we can do this ongoing. That's what we've done. And we've been, how long ago we bought that machine? Three years ago? And we've also come up with a So we're trying. We're, we're, we, we, we built a program around your ideas. 
And that's not good enough for you. No, it wasn't around my ideas. Yes, yes it was. It was me talking about it. was you terrible. bringing it up. But I also it, handed in a permit two months ago now. An application. And, and you were had it on, on the schedule for two weeks from now. But Pete, and and this is, this is I have, I've been 30 years I volunteered for things, and I'm not going to volunteer anymore. And the, 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 Joanne, Bar the, the Joanne Barton study that you're talking about, mm -hmm. this is the first time you've raised it that I can remember. I, I went and asked this, it was uh, this winter, I asked. I asked if it was in, in you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. on the town website. Yeah, well, not all documents are on the town website. No, and that's, that's what he told me. And so he spent a day looking for it, or part of the day. Well, I'm sorry he spent a whole lot of time looking for it. Well, you might have wanted to, it's a conservation issue, it's a select board issue, you could have well, contacted us, yeah, you could have contacted Stephanie. Denise, you could have contacted yeah. Stephanie, and then I tried, the clerk has nothing to do with that. And over the years, I've tried to get select board members to go down, even as far as Route 14, right here in Dallas, and, and look at the wild Jericho, and you don't have time. Peter, so, no, no, I've looked at the whole thing. You don't like what I'm saying? No, no, this is my view. This is great. Called, this is not it's fiction. My view. I drive all fiction. over town on 14. Mm -hmm. I see the triple. I see what yeah. you're saying. I see it. It's everywhere. This, everywhere. this is my view, and this is why I have given up volunteering. Good. Okay. Yeah. It's time for someone else to come. Okay. Well, I will see what There's I can a better do. Better attitude. I'm. I'm. Uh, so, what I I'm pleased that you and Alfred had a really productive time together, and you have a solution. Um, we will make sure that the the solution that you're bringing to us is documented in our minutes. Are you, Peter? Are you tonight withdrawing your application, yes. or do you want to wait? No. Nope. So tonight you want to withdraw. Yeah, and, Alfred, Alfred, and Alfred has he promised that he would, and, and you're uh, just uh, wait for the right on. I didn't get an answer. I'm, I'm not clear on Peter's answer to my question. Peter, are you withdrawing your application tonight? Yes or no? Alfred told me that he will wash the machine, and I said that I would withdraw my permit. And that's exactly tonight. Is, no. that, is that tonight? You it's, keep saying no. Is it now, or it is, is it? now. Okay. It's now. Okay. okay, and Alfred has. Because I trust Alfred to do what he said he would do. Okay, and the minutes okay. are going to show that Alfred and Peter came to this agreement that Alfred will wash the machine before he does the mowing. Yep. And, in, and in so doing, Peter's withdrawing his application effective tonight. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come back in six weeks or a couple of months and tell us that it all worked out great? I'd like to hear a final report. You know, this is, we're sort of in the middle of the story. Right now. So we want a happy ending. Are you willing to come back maybe and tell, you and and tell us if it's if it's working? Tell yeah, us if it's working. Then Alfred washed his machine and he mowed. So Peter, to go back to the points you were making earlier, sustaining the conversation and sustaining focus on a solution is part of how you achieve long term success. And so so having if we all walk away we all know from experience, if we walk away tonight, in, in a year and a half, we're going to be pulling up these old minutes and saying, remember this happened, this, I am looking for a way to sustain focus on an issue to do what you have challenged us that we're not doing. This is how we do do it, whether you want to see it or not. And so you coming back, maybe in the middle of September and saying it worked great. Alfred came a couple of times. That is a way of sustaining the conversation that sticks in people's memories. Alfred has a new way of doing things. You have a new way of seeing things. That is what makes the change that you're looking for. Are well, you willing really to set your timer for one minute so that I can actually talk? Oh, yeah. Peter, you talked for a lot tonight. That's what you keep on saying, but I keep on getting talked over. So are you willing to set your timer for one minute? Set your Just timer. Just one minute. Set it for That's all. Just set it for one minute. Are you going to answer my question? I'm not sure I know what your question is, but just set your time for one Peter, minute, Well, you need to answer the question. Please. He's no, will he come back? I, I, can't come come back. Talk. I can't talk. I, Peter, I will set my timer for one minute, and then I'm going to circle back, and I will repeat my question, and perhaps you will hear it the second time. OK. What I have learned over the last, particularly about Wild Turtle anyway, over the last six years, is that I could spend 40 hours replying to a one-hour uh, Zoom meeting with yours, and 
I don't think you read any of it. You didn't talk about it, that's for sure. Not with me, anyway. And I could go down to Randolph Center and talk with uh, a farmer for five minutes while he's bailing hay, or maybe ten minutes while he's, he's sliding bales into, uh, into sheaves. And to get somewhere and learn how to do it. I could go then talk to the people who live in the village and find out why they don't have wild children on their lawns and why they're completely surrounded, like they're in a sinkhole of, of wild chervil, and how frustrated they are with it, and find out what they're doing about it. But when I come in here, prepared to talk about this two weeks ago with pictures, you didn't have time. And, and you, you know, just, you brush things through. And, and then I, I talked to Seth Gardner. I talked to Seth Gardner about wild chervil. He's been more open to it than you have. Would you like another minute? Nope. Peter, are you willing to come back and report to us in September about how it worked out in the end with Alfred? Oh, yeah, sure. That would be great. Okay. That would be great. Thank you, Peter. All right. Do we want does, does Alfred have any updates? Alfred, do you have other things you want to discuss with us? Uh, no. I, I think I'm good after what I've heard so far. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We want to see Alfred to touch base with Guthrie too on this and, and see what, what his popular is doing. Maybe to see if there's anything else we can you know, build into our process. Uh, no, that's a, that is actually so. Yeah, Alfred, why don't you join us? Okay. Here. So I'm, I'm going to go to the, the people who live on, on these roads and tell them what you're going to do. Okay. And, uh, and I'll email them as well. So that they know you're coming. Okay. Well, I think I sh I'm, I want I'm ready to mow it tomorrow. All right. Well, give me how much time do you need? Give me through the weekend. What's today? Monday? Oh, this is Monday. Monday. This is the 11th. Yep. So I'm going to so lose three, 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 three days. Three days. Yeah, it's going to take me a few days because I'm going to write an email to him tomorrow. Monday. Monday is July 18th. Um, Alfred and Peter, one more thing. How much time? Peter, you're right. I am trying to run a very tight meeting. I'm sorry that you perceive that as I'm not willing to listen. What I would like to know in advance is how much time you think you would like in September so that we can block enough time on the agenda. I don't know. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you... I can tell you closer to the time. I, I expect that uh, it will be fairly short. I would expect that as well. I'm going to give you 15 minutes, okay. which, is, which, if you, which is more than we generally give for something like that. But I know you have a lot of things you like to say about those things. So that's what we're going to, we're going to if you need more, as the time approaches, we generally work, start working on the agenda a week in advance. So don't wait until the last minute to say, no, 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 I'm going to need half an hour. Let us know. Um, would you like me to give my personnel report update? Uh, I think we're going to have Alfred come join us. And Peter, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Peter. I'll wait uh, till Monday, Peter. Okay. Thank you, Monday. Well, that'll be plenty of time. I'm going to write an email and go door to door. Okay, Alfred, okay. we're ready for you now. So, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, I, it's it's frustrating for me that we haven't managed to convey to the town how much very much we have been focused on invasives, and I think you know that we have been. Um, so, if there's some best practices in East Montpelier that we can learn, I think our perception is it's your job to go over there and have conversations and figure out what they're doing and bringing it back, bring it back to us. And it makes me, I'm disappointed that people in town think that we, one that, that, that the select board has to be man, personally managing the invasives issue. It's one yeah. person. It's one person. I'm out for to get it on okay. into the notes that we publish. So we okay. talk, I've already talked about it. So you're willing to do time, that? So I'm absolutely willing to talk about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Well, about this issue and bring Absolutely. some best. Bring I, know, some, I know his answer is going to be most twice a year. He well, knows, you know, we all are often, right? 
So, but can you, but can you, what Peter described is a more intentional, and more intentional mowing, not just twice a year, but mowing where the, the a, a level of intent of intentionality about the mowing right. schedule. Right. Well, when it happens, right? we, obviously we know some of the locations where turtle is the most prevalent. Right. Those are the ones we're going to focus on first. That's what he's doing. Same thing he's doing. But that's actually, to be fair, because that's what we've, that's what we've. <laughs> I, I thought we were already doing that. Maybe yeah, that's, that's what he's doing. That's what he said. We're already doing that. Right. I don't know why Honestly, Peter's. I don't know why Peter's bugged. That's not me. We had a, like okay. he said, we had almost three hours in, in a pickup side by side, driving around those four roads, back and into every single driveway. And it seemed like he was satisfied and happy. I'm not sure why he's lashing out on you guys. It's, that, that has nothing to do because with it. Because he got attention from you that he's not getting from us. But there's a difference. You're an employee. You can do that. We're volunteers. We meet twice a month. Okay. Well, you know, we're not going to. Why don't you go down? Go and meet with Jeffrey and see, if, compare notes. What else is that? What are, what are you doing that maybe he can implement? What are they doing that we could? And then we can talk about it. Have a, have a report back. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. I mean, that's all we can do is all we can do. I mean, and I continue think, to do the best things we can. I think, I think I think you're doing a good job on it, but thanks. Yeah. So I disagree with Peter if that's his perception. I think you guys have been working your tough stuff. I mean, I see where you're cutting, man. And you're hitting it at the right time in the flower stage. So I'm happy. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, Denise, you have a personnel report for us. Yep. We have one DPW applicant, and the cutoff date is July 13th, which is Wednesday. So, um, is the advertisement still out there? It was advertised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we heard we heard about it, so we know we know it hit the ground. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, would you like me to make a motion to go into executive session? No, because I actually before we before we do that, I want I just want to have one item that I make sure Lisa captures in the minutes. Um, and if anybody else, I'm going to jump down to the round robin. We at the last meeting we approved. Um, and reported out that we are shifting to biweekly paychecks through a third party payroll service, pay data. And we have the contract that's under review now with the lawyers. And Denise and I meet tomorrow morning to get feedback from our attorneys just based right. on, on their review. Um, and so, also, we're going to go through direct deposit. Yes. Y yes. I, I, yeah. And we need to do a, a memo to, once we get all this stuff figured out, we'll do a memo to the staff. Right. Yeah, we have a target date. I think that's in the minutes. We should make sure that it is of October 1. Alfred, you're, you're, you're sort of the audience right now, but really I just want to make sure it's in the minutes so that. So I'm, I'm just, can I ask a question on that? Sure. The employees don't have a choice as to how they get paid? Well, that's why you saw me hesitating. My memory, Denise, is that pay data doesn't care whether it's direct deposit or oh, a maybe check. Oh, they don't, but we should double check. Yeah, if they, I don't, I think they don't care. Um, paycheck, a, a check, paper check or direct deposit, but. And we can ask if they can do both. Yeah, yeah I think they could, but, but don't quote us well, on I that. Think the, I think the issue is not the direct deposit, it's more the two week pay period. No, we're doing two weeks. That, and so the employees don't have a choice. That's here. correct. Okay. That's pretty much the standard. That's, that's, that's pretty much standard across the board. Okay, anyway. but it's not been standard in Calus. No, 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 no. no. It's been five years. It hasn't. No. It's always been no. a weekly. That's right. right. It has. I'm just again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share with Peter. Same. Same argument. I feel like I should be, or the road crew should be informed of this. It's a huge change. Because well, yes, Sharon, please. Okay, you're right. Keep if, now all of my guys, myself included, now we have to change our whole pay schedule. And a little bit of notice would have been nice to well, know is, that. Is this open. has not been out in the open. No, it hasn't. Did you say? Did you just hear me say we're aiming for October one? It's now early July. It's it's not it's okay. not next week. Okay. Well, I think I think that a little bit of discussion would have been would have been much more comforting. It's it's not next week. It is several months out. We are we are very much in the early stages, so we are doing exactly right, what you're asking. We proved it. We proved it last meeting. Yes, we did. Said. 
Yes, it was we did. Approved last meeting, so that means there's no room for discussion. There's no, there's no you guys looking at our side. There's, there's always all. reconsideration. You can always ask for us to reconsider a decision. Approval doesn't mean it's in concrete. You can always ask anytime there's a decision made out. I know, but we have been discussing we, this for like a decade. We have discussed this. We have discussed this over the years when we were working on a contract. The union contract right. that well, was in the was, contract. Was push back then. And yeah. Right, but it was, but it was then. still in the contract. So, so it never got approved. I think we are probably ready to go into executive session unless. But, but I just want to inform Alfred. Um, you know, we had a had a conversation with our treasurer, who's now retired, mm -hmm. and one of the most difficult things for her was she could not take a vacation. Right. Like. She couldn't, like, you could blow out of here for two weeks. She could not. You know why? She had to do payroll every week. Yep. Every week. That's right. Well, and I, was, I actually can't blow out of here for two weeks. So I have not. No, I'm saying, but you can. You can. I mean, that, that's, that's something that you have available to you. She did not have that available to you. And the number one, and the reason was because of this. And it, it, it's how the world operates today, you know? It's like so many things. It's a, it's a big cost to the town to do it twice from a labor. If we were to have a payroll company do it every week, it, it, it doubles the cost. So we're trying to cut corners so we can refocus money toward maybe a new tractor and a new mower. I mean, this is, right. we're always balancing. We're not trying to cut corners. That's the only thing I don't agree with. We're trying to find reasonable efficiencies where we actually can save money because Shifting to a payroll service saves a lot of time in the in the town office. It'll allow a person to take a vacation. There's a lot of there's reasons. Also, there's the consistency piece too. So if you have yep. somebody, a treasurer leave, right. you're, not, you're not in a situation where you're currently. That's yeah. right. Denise right. is doing payroll. Denise is serving as a payroll a payroll clerk right now. So so Alfred, fair enough. I. For you deserve to understand all of our whys. We're we're naming some of them right now. Denise is serving as a payroll clerk because we don't have a treasurer. So so shifting to a payroll service allows us to sustain our payroll solution even as treasurers come and go. It'll allow somebody to be relieved from weekly or day to day well, payroll I guess, responsibilities. I guess what I, what I was, the point I was trying to make. I, I don't like the idea, myself personally, I don't like the idea of two weeks, but that's not why I'm griping. It's more because you approve something without giving us a chance to put our input in, or say why we don't like it, or say, I mean, it, it's a, we're employees, you are the boss here. Yep. You gotta, you gotta form a, I think, you gotta form a better relationship with that, because I know there's more stuff in your future agendas that is gonna, affect our day-to-day -day schedules and life. I think you need to talk to us more. We, we, are, we work for you. Well, and if, we're, if we don't feel like we're working for you, like we're just, you're gonna slam the hammer down and that's it, then, then it's not a comfortable thing. I'm just asking a little more notice, a little more involvement, that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Alfred. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Alfred. That's on me, Alfred, you know, because I, I didn't think I could have communicated that down. I just didn't think about it doing it. So standard to practice. And we were doing it. Yeah, but it's a big change. It's I did. It might I be did. standard for all state employees or, or, or nationwide, whatever. It's still a big change for the it. little I town of Cal's road crew. I get so, it. It's so, twice as much money so for two weeks instead of. It, anyway, it, you guys have decided that it's fine. It's fine. So, Alfred, we have down next, next meeting to meet with the new road crew members. Okay, who do you consider new road crew members? Because they're all pretty new. Um, well, we want to meet John, and we don't need to meet Ed and, Ed and Dana. We know them. Um, we we know Tyler from the contract stuff. Well, no, no, that was Paul. That was, that was Paul. Yeah, so I, would I, mean, say, I would say John, Tyler, or maybe even all of them. Maybe it's a time to meet with. Or maybe this, yeah, 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 maybe all, all of them. them. Um, like I said, they're all pretty new. Alfred, one, one more thing on, on implementing a pay uh, bi-weekly. One of the things that uh, we don't have the details on yet is ways to um, 
Edge of the pavement? No, is, cons is, smooth, is smooth the rough edges in the transition. So yes, we are going to shift. We, kn we know that this is not the, that, that particular piece is not the most popular thing. But we do know that we are gonna, we're going to learn some ways that we can smooth the rough ed ed edges to help people transition from weekly to bi-weekly. I don't have any detail on what that might be yet, but that would be a place where I feel like it would be absolutely appropriate to say, here's some options. Do you guys like this idea, that idea? Does that make a difference to you? You remember when we were yeah, talking we were with the talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't remember the, what, what those were, only I, I noted, oh, there's some ways that we could smooth the transition. But again, um, it's our target date is October 1. It's several weeks. Well, and if you yeah. have, if, if there's issues that the, that the guys have, you know, make a note and let us know in advance what the issues are so that when they come to us or you come to us, we have answers or can look for answers ahead right. of time. Right, yeah. so we already made the decision. So, you know, no matter what our problems or issues would be. You can still tell us, decision. because no, you can still tell us what they are. Right, because we're, we, because we, we haven't signed a contract yet. Well, hang on, but also we can mitigate. Right. We can make, how do we, there's, I don't understand how we, how we do, but the people who do this for a living understand ways to mitigate a transition. And so knowing specifically, if we hear from you specifically, this is why one is, weekly is better, then maybe that informs a way that we make the transition, if that makes any sense. Okay, so, we should go into executive yeah. session. So I would make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss personnel issues under 1 BSA section 313 and invite the road commissioner to join us. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, this way.